Today I'm exploring Scotland. We're in the small village of Clacken. Now, staying here in Clacken for a couple of days to explore Kintyre. It's the oldest village in Kintyre and there's quite a lot of history associated with the village and the area. I'm going to start this video by explaining who Sir William McKinnon is, or to give him his full title. First Baronet of Strathaird and Loop. He was born in Campbellton in 1823. He initially trained as a greengrocer and then he went to the University of Edinburgh to complete his education. He was a joint founder of the British India Steam Navigation Company. It had objectives in that it wanted to strive for the elimination of slavery. It wanted to prohibit monopoly and it wanted equal treatment for all nations. At the time of his death, he left quite a legacy where a lot of people in Victorian times, Industrial Revolution, um, possibly used their money for their own self-interest. Um, Sir McKinnon actually used his to benefit a lot of the normal folk on Kintyre. Sir McKinnon founded the Keel Technical School, the Kintyre Technical School. Um, it was basically to assist young men who struggle to um, access education, to give them the best education possible. On his death, his name and McNeil's name, who was one of his co-founders of the steam company, uh, there was a trust made in their names and really funded a lot of the positive education in Kintyre. William McKinnon founded Keel School at Southend that we will visit. Unfortunately, the school burnt down a few years after it had been started and the whole shebang was moved to Dumbarton um, and a new Keel School was formed. Then the Second World War happened um, and parents and teachers alike were scared that their kids were going to end up um, injured. Dumbarton was heavily, heavily bombed during the Second World War. So McKinnon said, well, that's fine. All you've come down and stay with me. So basically they came down and they stayed on Balmakill estate until after the war. Balmakill house and parts of Clacken were in part Sir William McKinnon's estate. This is the little house we're staying at. Reportedly, Mr. McKinnon's chauffeur lived here. And it is said that the railings were actually from one of his ships. This gate is a war memorial gate built in 1921 by Ebenezer James McRae. Uh, he was the city architect of Edinburgh and this is one of the very rare examples of his work outside the city. It's quite unusual because on the gate we have a plaque of a Berlin and a warrior in full rig out. This church was built in, in around 1780. It's on a much earlier site though, like all the churches in Scotland. The little porch was put on in 1952. I've taken some photographs of the graves um, in a slightly better light than tonight. But they range from early Christian through medieval until post-reformation ones. 
it's such a very very old site this will be a hard one to see in this light but you can see a head up there it is a representation of John Knox the charter for this church was granted in 1455 by the Lord of the Isles Sir William McKinnon sponsored the improvements in the late 19th century to the church but there was one item in the church that could not be touched there was a grave a grave of a soldier who had fought in Culloden and when the improvements were called for his family asked could he be left in peace apparently he still lies beneath the church floor with his sword drawn and his gun loaded and ready to go the name Kilcalmanel the church was dedicated to St Coleman who was actually a nephew of St Columba never far away from St Columba anywhere we go Sir William McKinnon is buried here in these pre-reformation stones you can clearly see a broadsword Right, so we are paddling through the village of Clacken. We have spoken to some of the local old hands and they've told us quite a lot of information. Uh, we did get information about illegal whiskey stills, but we'll discuss them in a different video. What about the parties? Yes, lots of parties. Wait till I turn this around a minute. This is the village square. And on a Saturday night apparently there would have been parties of up to 70 people out in this square having a full on jig and tea and sandwiches and having a proper party I think it was more than tea and sandwiches I'm just reporting what the person reported to us <laughs> if you want to make stuff up it was clearly a very thriving village not so much now so many villages are turning into basically Airbnbs. You will notice that this house has steps down to the river. This was for daily washing of your dishes. I will put up a picture of the little hoof that would have been used for the whole village to do their laundry. It was basically a big steel bath that was heated up in a tiled room with an escape for the steam and that's what you did your laundry in this was um, a church it's now a private residence so we can't get into it uh, Mr McKinnon funded this local knowledge says that the masonry and the bricks came from Wales at great expense and that they change colour when it rains we've been very lucky and there hasn't been rain yet so I don't know, I, I can't say that happens or not we are going to go round to the gatehouse of the McKinnon property it's a bit run down apparently two brothers own it and don't really want to do much to it which is a shame because it has been a beautiful place in its time And here it is.